My name is Mariela, and I came from the workshop company. In the workshop, we develop uh, mainly gambling solutions, and we are hiring people, and we have a stand here. You can go there and ask whatever you need. Um, <laughs> Also, um, well, in the workshop, I am senior software engineer. I have been working in the workshop for more than three years, almost four. I couldn't be more happy for that because I found a lot of opportunities to grow up in the workshop as a woman in this industry. As you know, it's, a, it's an industry that is mainly uh, dominated, but it's not dominated by men, okay? And we are trying to incorporate more women to the industry. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to do this talk today, also because we are celebrating the International Women Day <laughs> a bit later, but it's not, uh, uh, it's good. Um, also, I'm from Cuba. I went to Malaga to study a PhD degree some years ago, and here in this university, I was doing uh, an investigation regarding how to apply artificial intelligence in video game programming, and today, we will talk about one of the techniques for artificial intelligence, which are the bio-inspired algorithms that are inspired in the, well, some of them are inspired in the evolution theory from Darwin, okay? And there are a lot of applications of those algorithms in our normal life, okay? We will see that uh, today. This is the agenda for the presentation. Uh, we are going to start giving an, a, smart, a, a short review about the artificial intelligence concept. And later we will move about how the inspired algorithm, how they are useful, how uh, we can use in our industry, in many industries, okay? What evolutionary computation is. Evolu evolutionary computation is a subfield from artificial intelligence, okay? And um, also I want to show you one example a bit practical example about how to apply the coevolution, which is one of the bio-inspired algorithms to programming one artificial intelligence, one bot for a video game, okay? And we're at the end, we will have the conclusions. Artificial intelligence is a huge concept. When most people hear about artificial intelligence, they can start thinking in robots, in matrix film, even in Terminator. Um, but the, the actual progress of the artificial intelligence is, fra is far from that scary idea. Most of the efforts are focused on how to solve problems from our normal life, okay? And we are going to see that uh, also artificial intelligence is not, is not always about how to simulate the human behavior. It, it's also about how to find uh, other mm, solution for, for example, for optimization problems, okay? And also they can be inspired not only in the human brain, they can be inspired in animals on, in all the process that are not related on the, to, uh, with the human life behaviors, okay? From my point of view, one of the most interesting questions regarding artificial intelligence is, what is intelligent when we are talking about programs, okay? because it's different, the human intelligence and the intelligence for the computer program. And this is a difficult question because we don't have a solid definition about that. We don't have a solid definition about uh, what is the intelligence for the program, okay? But we can say that artificial intelligence is computational intelligence because the, our main goal here is to make intelligent computer programs, okay? We, we want to create computer programs as capable as capable as people at solving problems, okay? Um, in order to see the difference between the intelligence for a computer program and the intelligence for a human, we can take as a reference one example. Probably uh, some of you knows about Deep Blue. Deep Blue was a computer program that was created for playing the cheese game and was able to, to defeat the world champion Kasparov in 1997, I think, okay? Uh, imagine that was a, an amazing result, was an impress impressive result for a machine. But imagine that you have the opportunity to take Deep Blue with you to your house. <laughs> um, you can, of course, if you play the chess game, 
<laughs> against the flu, you will be defeated, okay, without dignity. But maybe if you want to play Tetris, okay, the blue won't be able to do that. The blue won't be able to do anything else but playing the, play the shift game. On the other hand, we, the normal people, okay, we are not an, an as, as smart as the blue to play the shift game, but probably tomorrow, we can start playing a new game, a totally unknown game from scratch, from the beginning, okay? And we will be able, maybe in, in 10 minutes or maybe in 20, to create, to design a game playing, I mean, a game a strategy to play the game, okay? So this is, I mean, the intellectual process that are happening in our brain. This is the main difference between the in artificial or the intelligence that we can program for computer programs are the artificial, the, the intelligence that we have in our brain. Computer programs uh, needs to use a lot of computation to, um, to compensate the lack of the intellectual mechanisms. And it's very difficult to, because you can say, well, we can simulate how the brain is performing and we can apply that to the, to the machine. But the problem is that we are still discovering how our brain is working. In, in all the, I mean, for all the situation. So it's difficult to, to have the understanding about that and to give the understanding to the machine, okay? For me, this is one of the weakness of the artificial intelligence because some of the intelligence that we are able to create are limiting for one specific context, okay? These are uh, some of the subfields that are in the computational intelligence uh, branch from the artificial intelligence. And there are others that maybe can be discovered tomorrow, okay? Because this is a field which is, uh, is active, I uh, mean, respect to the uh, investigation. Probably you know uh, about the Turing test. This was another test that was, was created, but in this case was Alan Turing also known as the father of the artificial intelligence. And this is like a test to determine is a program if intelligent or not, okay? You can see the test, you can read the description, but you can say, oh, it seems to be easy, okay? But, uh, to, I mean, to, today we don't have any, any computer program that has passed the test. The, I think the best performance was reached by a, an Ukrainian computer program that was developed so years ago and uh, was simulating a 13 year old boy, a, a boy, okay? And the, in that case, there were three human evaluators and one of the human was fooled by the machine. But the, the, the other two was able to identify who was the, the, the human in the, in the test. And this is again about the contest because when you are having a conversation, okay, you can ask question from a lot of topics. So in, uh, this is the weakness of the artificial intelligence. If you are asking questions to Siri and Alexa, you will see that for some questions they use, you know, a typical <laughs> answer to skip the, the topic, okay? And application of, of artificial intelligence, there are a lot of them, okay? You can see some of them, uh, and not all are based on the, on, to simulate the human, the human behavior, for example, in oceanography, we use the artificial intelligence uh, algorithms to create, uh, normally we are scanning the, the surface of the sea, but there are some places when we are not able to do the, the scanner on that place. So we use the artificial intelligence to, um, to create, okay, to simulate how, come, how, how come, can be the scanner of, of that part, okay? To, I mean, to fill the gap that we have and the, the algorithms have a, a high accuracy, okay? Um, for sure, there is the robotic target in this uh, branch. It's maybe the most famous, you know, because we want to have robots similar to, to human, okay? But this is only one, one small part, one small piece in the artificial intelligence concept. This slide is just to show you the one of the taxonomy because one of the subfields from the computational intelligence is the soft computing. And the soft computing have these main, I mean, main subfields, okay? And one of them is the evolutionary computation. Another one which is very famous is artificial neural networks, okay? And uh, this talk will be focused on the evolutionary computation. 
These are some examples of the bio-inspired algorithms. These algorithms are, are, I mean, the algorithms that I am showing here are uh, only for optimization, for solving pro optimization problems, okay? Some of them are inspired in the evolution theory, but others are, are inspired in the swarm behavior from animals, okay? For example, we have algorithms in, inspired by the uh, bee colonies and colonies, okay? And they are useful, they can give a good performance uh, searching uh, solution for optimization problems. We don't have time to, to talk uh, about uh, all of them, but you can, you can uh, Google, you can go to Google and you can see information about the application, okay? And you can think, why the evolution theory? Why is interesting for that, okay? And uh, maybe this, uh, the, the, this idea can explain, uh, can show you which is the motivation for this field. Is that if we, if we consider that our brain, I mean the human brain, is uh, the machine like provide uh, the human intelligence, which is the best intelligence in the world that we know, okay? Uh, maybe uh, the interesting idea, instead of, because we don't have all the understanding about how the, the brain is performing, but maybe we can take a look to the mechanisms that create our brain. So this is the motivation for this part of the artificial intelligence, the evolutionary computation, okay? Which is inspired in the bio biological uh, evolution. And I know this is a bit complex, okay? I will try to explain which is the, uh, the main procedure for a genetic algorithm um, in the, as part of the evolutionary algorithms, there are a lot of, of, of algorithms, but I will say that the, the basic one is the genetic algorithm, okay? And the genetic algorithm for the, it try to, to follow the process of the reproduction for the breeding that we have in our real life, okay? We have a population, we have parents of new people which are the new generation and that new people have the combination of the genes from their parents, okay? And sometimes they have some mutations in the gene. Some of them can, can be chaotic and another can be <laughs> successful, okay? This is the idea of the genetic algorithm. Main thing that you need to, to provide here and sometimes it's the most difficult part when we are trying to apply Algorithm, uh, genetic algorithms to a real life problem because we are, we are talking about programming, we are talking about computer programs. So we need to be able to create a representation of our problem in the computer program. And this part, this structure that we need to create, it, it sometimes is the most difficult part. All, uh, also, we need to provide the thickness, which is the, one of the main concepts of this algorithm. Finnex is the mechanism to evaluate each people, each person, each individual in my population. Because in we are try, if we are trying to find the best solution, I mean the, the best individual that I was able to create, I, I need to be able to evaluate the performance of, of the individuals in order to identify which is the, the best one, okay? So, this part is also uh, sometimes is, is complex because imagine you need to create a, a formula to, to calculate uh, with a numerical value how good or how bad is, is a, an individual in your population, okay? Let's see an example later uh, regarding the coevolution. Coevolution is also uh, inspired in the evolution, okay? But it's uh, present a different dynam dynamics between the populations. Coevolution say that uh, well, in, the, in nature we have two different approaches for, for the coevolution. First one is the collaborative coevolution, which is when you have two species of two, two populations and they are uh, interacting and both are, uh, are having benefit for the interaction, okay? This is one example of the clown uh, fish and the anemone. And the other one is the competitive coevolution. In this other uh, scenario, which the basic example is the predator prey and parasitisms, in this uh, other uh, scenario, one of the population can have benefit and, I mean, causing damage in the other population. So they start uh, 
creating uh, an interesting dynamic which is similar to an armed race in which if one population uh, develop an improvement, the other population needs to overcome this improvement in order to guarantee the survival, okay? So for video games, this approach is very useful because most of the video games are competitive. So if you want to create game strategy, I mean bots, okay? Artificial intelligence to, to manage the non-person non characters, you can use this approach because you want to have competition in the game playing, okay? The example we are going to show today how to, to apply all of these concepts about the evolution and coevolution in, in one practical example. This is a, a simple RTS game, okay? Planet Wars that was, was uh, proposed as part of the, one of the artificial intelligence challenge that uh, Google was a sponsor for that uh, contents and also was, uh, I think, was proposed for the University for Waterloo, okay? They used to do this kind of thing every uh, some years. And this was uh, a game that, uh, this is, the game doesn't have a human interface. This is only a visualization tool because the game is always player between bots. So you need, to, you need to program a bot, you need to create a computer program to play this game, okay? They provide, when, during the contest, they provide the, the source code uh, in different languages, in Java, in Python, okay? And you can download, you could download the, the code and you could create your, your bot, okay? And you have a map, only two players, which are two bots, okay? And in the map we have uh, a lot of planets. Each planet has uh, a value, which is the growth rate, which is like uh, in, the pla in the planet, uh, there is a dynamic like bros, uh, like workers that are creating resources. So if you have a high growth rate in ratio for this, player, for this planet, it means that if you send five flicks to the planet, uh, maybe in two minutes you will, th that number of resources will be multiplied, okay? So uh, are constantly increasing the, the number of resources from the planet. And um, also the, the, the planners uh, are, uh, I mean, the, the players can own the planners. If you, if you send when the, when the game starts, all the planners are neutral, I mean, doesn't have, uh, they don't have any um, property, the, the player don't, don't have the property of the player. But when you, when you set the ship to the player for the first time, this planner is, your, is yours, okay? So the possible action here for the bots are only send, send, fix, uh, send ships to the planner. You can send fix to your own planners, to the enemy planners, or also to the neutral planners, okay? Uh, let's see. How we can, the first step here is try to create, I mean, our goal is try to design a game a strategy for our bot, okay? So we want to apply a coevolutionary algorithm which use, which use a genetic algorithm inside to generate the best possible game strategy for my bot, okay? First thing that we need to do is to provide the previous representation that I mentioned before. We need to be able to create one structure in, in my computer program to represent my possible solution, okay? In this case, we have, this is like a matrix, okay? With two dimensions, one of them is respect, let me try this, yeah. <laughs> one of them is uh, represent the, my advantage, I mean the advantage of my bot uh, over the growth rate respect to the enemy, and the other uh, dimension is about the number of teeth that, that I have in total, okay? And regarding these two dimensions, I would make one decision. The possible decision are defined here. This is, these are the possible decisions that I have defined, okay? And this, this would be the representation of my gaming strategy, okay? Next step will be start the algorithm. First of all, remember that we are talking about a population and each individual of the population represent one possible solution, okay? So each individual have this previous representation that we have defined, okay? And we are uh, in, in the first generation, I mean, in the, the first time we start the algorithm, we are going to uh, generate randomly 
all the individual for my population because we don't have any idea about how to generate that. In this case, maybe uh, there are another algorithms that use some approach to, to generate that, but in this case, in this example, the simplest one is generate the population randomly. And what we need to do? Well, we need to start evaluating each individual, okay, in order to know which are the best individuals that I have at this moment in my population. And for that, I need to define uh, uh, the fitness function. And in this case, uh, as we are talking about, sorry, <laughs> as we are talking about the coevolution, we have two different populations. In this case, the second population is also for the same species. I mean, both populations are the same bot that I, I want to create, okay? Um, what I am going to do is for evaluate each individual in the population A, the, the first population, I will, um, play the game, which this, this individual needs to play the game against another individual for the other population. So in the first, uh, in the first generation, as we are generating the players randomly, I mean the, the, the bots randomly, we don't have which is the best for each population, but in the, in, I mean, when, when I uh, have made some of the generation, I will have this like uh, the Hall of Fame, which is the list that contains the best individual that I have been found in every iteration. So what I am trying to do here is in the evaluation, I am, I, I am trying to force that the one individual needs to be able to defeat the best individual, the song of the best individual from the other population. So I am trying to force the continuous improvement in between the, the both the, uh, between both population. Okay, so this is the I mean the general idea. It's clear. It's clear. I'm, I'm at least the general idea because I know it's complex. Okay. Uh, and there are a lot of details regarding the implementation of this kind of algorithm. I am trying only to show how we can uh, approach a problem applying that, but uh, there are a lot of details, okay? Mm, okay, uh, well, the, the genetic algorithm part uh, takes place here. I mean, after the evaluation of the population, I need to uh, start with the uh, dynamic which is similar to the natural selection. Only the fetus sur will survive, okay? So I will uh, evaluate all the individuals and I will select the best, the, which are the best, and uh, I will create the new generation using those parents, okay? And for that creation, I will use crossover and I will use also mutation, okay, which is a combination of the part of the, the, the individual, and I will create another one. Uh, and I will start again with the next iteration, and I will be doing this for a limit, uh, maybe we can use, I, I don't know, 50 generations, and at the end, I will have the list of the best players I found in each population, okay? One important thing regarding the evolutionary computation is that when you, when you need to, to solve an optimization problem, you have two main ways. One is the exact algorithms, which are the algorithms that will explore all the search space. And it means that if you have, imagine this is our representation for the solution, okay? Imagine you, we have here for this two dimension matrix, we have a, a lot of combination, okay? So the exact methods will explore each possible combination, evaluate the combination, and for sure, at the end of the algorithm, you will not exactly which is the best combination, which is the best solution. But maybe you need to, to, to invest a lot of time for that because you need to explore all the search space. On the other hand, this kind of algorithms, the uh, evolutionary computation, is based on heuristics, okay? And which is, which is an heuristic? It's like an indicator that you can use in your algorithm to be able to skip some parts of the search space because you consider that in this part of the search space, you don't have a high probability to find a good solution. So, but maybe you are wrong. <laughs> maybe yes, but maybe not. But at the end, the good part of this approach is that you will be able to, to, to reach a good solution. I mean, a, a solution which is, is good for your problem in a, in a good, with a good performance because you are trying to, to avoid to explore all the search space. But the drawback is that maybe you are not able to guarantee 
to provide the best solution because maybe the best solution one of uh, on that piece that you uh, uh, skip it from the search, okay? But maybe in this, uh, I mean, in this scenario, you need to evaluate and you need to see the balance. And sometimes it's better to use this approximate approach in, instead of use the exact method, okay? Uh, these are some examples about the coevolution co co application. And this one, let me try to about uh, one experiment of creating uh, creating virtual virtual creatures, and the virtual creatures need to to learn how how to move in the environment because they need to com to to compete with the other population for food. So they need to learn how to to move quickly in order to to arrive to the food before of the opponent. So and the yeah there are a lot of uh, you can if we can see the video. Yeah, there are a lot of examples. Uh, yeah. Yeah. These are some of them. Some of them are, are inspired by fish, and other are inspired by uh, other animals. Okay, and they were created only using the the coevolution because they needed to compete for food uh, with other populations. So, and they create these um, different kind and kind of uh, creatures. And um, yeah, maybe the most interesting are at the end of them. Look at this, for example. Yeah, some of them are, are very weird because they need to, to invent it, how, to, how to create the movement, okay? And this was doing using coevolution. Um, well, there are a lot of another examples, and there are more examples than, than this one. Um, some of them, uh, well, most of them were using for creating artificial intelligence for, for bots, but uh, regarding video games, artificial intelligence application is not always about how to provide intelligence for bots. It's, it's, it's also about the procedural content generation. I don't know if you are familiarized with that content. It's about how to generate the content for the video game on the play, okay? Or maybe not on the play, but with of human, okay? Um, for example, Minecraft is an example of that. I mean, Man Minecraft is like an infinite game. I mean, the, the, you know, the environment is, is being building during the, 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 the playing, but uh, I know that Minecraft has uh, very simple graphics. So for that reason, I mean, it's easier if you think in other video games that have mm, Final Fantasy, for example, well, it could be very difficult. But this is another application of artificial intelligence techniques for video games. In, it, it is not always about how to make uh, bots that are intelligent, okay? Uh, well, uh, conclusions. Well, I hope that uh, I know the intelligent, um, artificial intelligence is uh, big concept and for this algorithm there are a lot a lot of details and each of the details of the algorithm how to define for example the the genetic the operators genetic operator that you are going to use for for create the off spring during the the evolution mm, there are a lot of publication about that so there are a lot of people doing research about this uh, this algorithm but uh, i hope that you have the idea that Artificial intelligence is more about programming than building super machines, okay? It's, it's about computational intelligence. And also, the AI technologies are not as scary uh, as smart as you can uh, see in the uh, science fiction novels, okay? I hope that you, I mean, when you know that, when you understand the difference between the intelligence that we are able, at least now, to provide to, to machines and, and the difference between our intelligence, the human intelligence, it is difficult to be uh, scary again about the Terminator or, or that kind of things. Um, well, um, yes, artificial intelligence, uh, we are in contact with a lot of applications. For example, the smart navigation, you know, the, when you are driving, this is also artificial intelligence. And it's a, it's a sim simpler program that uh, is in our, in our life, okay? There are a lot, a lot of areas waiting for contribution and contributors because there are a lot of things uh, which are uh, active uh, research field, okay? So feel free to... To, to go there and feel free to create new solutions. And I would like to finish the presentation with this idea because it's from, oh, again, I forgot about that. 
um, Rosalind Pica, which is a woman, and it's like the mother of the affective computing. And it's, about, it's another subfield from the computational intelligence at the world. Here is how to, how to create computer programs that are able to not only simulate emotion, make decisions based on, the, on that emotion. Because you can see in some of the video games, you can see uh, in the male shadow, they are, they are expressing emotion. But this is, most of the time, this is uh, only about the artistic, you know, the animation, at, uh, that kind of thing. But it's not about the behavior, the emotional behavior on that uh, bot, no? And the affective computation is about that. And it's a recent uh, subfield from the computational intelligence that was inspired by or created by this amazing woman. And it's waiting for a lot of contribution because we have some successful examples here, but it's, it's the new West, OK? So feel free to, 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 to be part of, the, of this investigation. Uh, yeah, I need to finish because uh, the time is over. Thank you all for attending. Um, we don't have time for questions, but I will be here, around here, for all the day, so we can have a quick chat if you need to ask someone. Uh, and it was a pleasure for me. Thanks.